These are the plaintiffs, Octavia and Natavia Savage. Octavia says she brought their car to the defendant's repair shop for a new engine, and it's now been a year since they dropped it off. That's right, they have no car. The defendant doesn't return their calls, and they're here suing them for the $10,000 they're most certainly owed. This is the defendant, Paul Musoki. He says the plaintiff, Octavia, dropped the car off at a shop with a new engine that was no good. He told her he could find her the right engine, but would have to charge her an additional $500. She agreed, but never paid him. And after six months, he put a lien on the car. Now the woman's trying to get 10,000 bucks out of him? Please. He's accused of taking way too long. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiffs brought their car to the defendant's repair shop for a new engine. A year later, they still don't have their car. But the defendant says the plaintiffs didn't pay, so the defendant had a lien on the car. It's the case of don't lean on me. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, man. Okay, Octavia Savage and Natavia Savage, you're suing Master Mobile Mechanic. Mr. Musoki, you're the owner. That's that's who you are, Master Mobile Mechanic. Yes, ma'am. Okay, for $10,000 that you say you are owed as a result of you leaving your car with him and um, it's gone. That's All it. right, but tell me why it is that you left your car with him. You were hiring him to do some work on the car. What is the work that needed to be done on the car? An uh, engine um, change. Did the car work when you brought it to him? You had to have it towed. I had to have it towed. Okay, so this is a non-working car. Yes. Okay, so you get it to him, and what is he going to charge you to change the engine? Seven hundred dollars. And did you pay him a deposit, or did you pay him the full seven hundred? I paid him a deposit. Okay, how much did you pay? Three fifty. All right, and then did you buy it? Were you responsible for buying the engine? Yes. So you buy it and you bring it to him? Yes. And according to you, that engine wasn't working? It turned, but it, no crank. Never turned on initially. Okay, and that's something you can't tell until you install it, right? Yeah, correct. All right, so you tell her the bad news, and where had you bought the engine? Online. Oh. Okay, but it was used, right? It was no. a rebuilt engine? Rebuilt. We'll do a rebuild. Re yeah. Honor, it was bought on eBay. Okay. Yeah, that's online. No, but it was it was bought on eBay from a wrecking yard. It was not rebuilt. Okay. I tried to fight for her to get her money back from the eBay seller. And? And they denied her. They didn't give her her money back. And I tried to fight for her to get her money back. Okay. Um, did you end up getting your money back for that? No. no. Did you fight it on eBay? I did fight it on eBay, and they told me that their engines work perfectly fine, that they don't have Well, they have don't get to say that. that you have yeah, evidence that it didn't. Didn't, yeah. So basically, they just told me that they couldn't really do much about it at that right. point. So. Um, so, okay, so that's engine one. And, that, and by the way, when did they give you the car? Uh, this was in January. It was in early January. Of, of what 2018. Year? So now you know that you've got to take care of business and buy another engine or do something. Yes. So what do you do? So from that um, point, I did get another engine. Um, well, matter of fact, he told me, he was like, I'll find you guys an engine. So then that's when I had made a payment to him. I think it was around $800. He when said he, did you make a payment to him? I made a payment July 4th. And okay, but hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm in January right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm January. I need you so, to talk to me about what happens he, in January. So he's telling me that he's going to look for an engine. Okay. So at that point, um, he's looking for an engine. I'm looking for an engine. I can't find an engine. He said, I'm going to make the initiative to help you find an engine. So okay. we made that payment to him. Wait, so he that's can look the payment. For that's not July. We're talking about January. Did you make him a payment in January? Yeah, I, we, you know, my mom made the payment right. in Okay, January. how much did you pay in January? Is this before? Are we talking about an additional payment besides the 350 no, no. That's this it. is he, we we. My mom made the payment for three fifty. Of three fifty when yes. you handed the car over, and right. then was there any other payment in January? No, there was no more payment in January. Okay, because that's when he told me. He said he came to my house. He said the engine didn't. He said the engine right. didn't work. He came to my house. So, he said I'll take. And the he says if you bring me a second engine, I've already done work. You have to understand, I'm going to charge you for yes, my labor. That's what he said. Yes. All right. So now, when do you bring him another engine? Um. No, well, that time he's telling me he's going to look for me an engine. Okay. So I'm what waiting on him. What the rest of January, February, March, April, May? I'm waiting on him because he's telling me he's going to look for, for an engine. For five months? Yeah. Yes. He's okay. I'm According him. to you, what happens in those five months? Your Honor. Don't, you know, just answer my question. According to you, what happens in those five so months? So after I deliver the bad news about the engine having no compression, I did try to help her get her money back so she can have the funds to get another engine or 
pay to fix this Were, engine. Did you ever tell them that you would find them another engine or you would try to help? I did tell them I'll help them find another engine. And we both- Did you find another engine? Uh, not within their budget. Every engine I told them was a lot more than $800. So at that point, I backed out of finding the engine. Okay, so now March, April, and May, do you hear from them? March, April, May, June, July, I have not heard from them. I end up having to relocate my shop in April. I try to call and try to call. I try to contact Do you have any them. evidence that you try to call and try to call and it's, try to contact? It's in my older phones. I've sent my technicians to So no, you don't have any house. proof of that. All right. No. Well, you know, you can get that from the company that you I know. have service with. I understand. With. Um, and um, did you mail them anything? Uh, no, I did not mail them anything. Well, you filed a lien on the car, right? I did. When did you file the lien on the car? It was in July of, of 2018. What year? Of what year? 2018. In July of 2018, you filed yes. a lien? Can I see the lien paperwork? Yes, ma'am. Hand it to my bailiff, please. Oh, and then what happens? She receives it. I got no response from her at all. How do you, okay. So theoretically, when you, uh, when you get a response, the buyer has an opportunity to either pay their fees and square up. And what were the fees at that point? It was all storage fees. Well, how would they know that they're paying storage fees? She did get a, re she did get a receipt. Um, and there's a, there's a big sign on my, my wall. Did she get a receipt that says we're charging you storage fees? She did when I sent out the lien sale. Okay, but not beforehand. In other words, that's how you get somebody to agree that they're going to pay that. But mm -hmm. in any event, when do you have communication again with her, with them, either of them? They pop up, I think, in August, around okay. August. But keep in mind, this is from February to August. Yes, I understand. And what happens in August? Uh, she just shows up at my, uh, my shop and says, hey, baby, oh, baby. Like, Which sweet. one, the daughter or the mother? This is the mother. Okay. And she's like, hey, baby, I, I don't want to work at your shop. I can do little things here and there. I want to get this, really not talking about the vehicle and what we're going to do. Um, what, where was the vehicle at that point? Sitting in the back of my lot. Okay. And each one of those spots is, that's, they're money spots. I can generate money from each so, one of those so spots. So do you say to her, you owe me money? Yes. I what told, do you tell her she owes you? I told her you owe me storage fees. And we had a balance from when I previously put what the What was the balance in. from before? Her balance was $350. She never Did gave me Did they bring a you a second engine? Uh, back in like January of 2019. Wow. All right. They so sent then, some what guy you, to drop they, off an engine. All right. So you guys are still working together on this project a year later. All right. And so the engine comes and then what happens? So actually, we're not working on it. Well, did um, you accept the engine? Well, they had some guy just drop engine off. We didn't even know where the engine came from. But the issue was the car was it was towed. Did well, you call them? I did notify her that, hey, I had your car here for a year. I had to tow your car from my last location to here. You guys disappeared. I don't know. They said a sad story. Something happened. I'm not sure why. I didn't really care about it. Did well, they literally ghost for a whole year? You I'm, had no conversation with them since February? They ghosted for about six months. Okay. okay. And then you tell her that, and then what do they say? And she keeps derailing from uh, the storage fees and says, no, baby, uh, I'm going to give you this 350 that I owe you, but I don't have it today. Uh, I'm going to come later on and do this. I said, I still need storage fees. I'm not going to move on this without being compensated. I had to push your car around. I had to make sure nobody steals your car. I had to protect your vehicle. I had to do this for a full six months. You, you disappeared. Six months after 30 days, I'm supposed to get rid of your Did car. Did you call them? I, I, I made numerous calls. Do you have phone records? I can, I didn't no, have today, time. No, today, today is the yeah. day. And it was right. on a different line. I was monitoring that my phone. That doesn't matter. They still exist with the phone company. Yeah, they do. That's how people get phone records. A hundred percent. So now, so what is it you tell them is gonna happen? Do uh, mechanics generally take advantage of women? What do you say? I would guess they would. Why do you say that? Well, because we don't know as much about mechanics as we should. I know that that's what people used to say. Is that still true, that women don't know nearly as much about cars and mechanics as men? I think it depends on the woman. I, I agree with you, but is it, you know... It, I, think that's, I think that's the perception. Is the perception true or not? I don't know. I guess it depends. <laughs> You don't want to answer that, do you? <laughs> no, <not at> <laughs> Going inside the card room. So I'm telling them we're on pause unless you're going to, number one, give me my storage fees and the 350 you owe me, and then we'll continue our scope. Then they, she pops up, 
I start dealing with the daughter and her boyfriend pop up and they had some dude call me threatening me or some crap like that. And I'm like, okay, well, it's still threatening busy. you about what? Threatening me about the car. Wait, saying what? Why haven't you put the second engine? No, Tell saying, me what they were saying. Hey, hey, what's going on with the car? Y'all had it forever. I said, look, they know what time it is. They catted on me for six months. And then the, I started talking to the boyfriend who was cool. He was like, yeah, I know, man, this woman stuff and all this. And I'm like, hey. Woman stuff? Yeah. The hell he, does that have to do with woman stuff? I don't know if he stuff. was backing her up. I don't know. He'd be supportive, I guess, you know? Well, that doesn't sound like good support. Huh? No. <laughs> it, 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 it also doesn't even make any sense. I do this all day long. It's not there's, It's not gender related. Trying to be supportive, I guess. Bottom line is he's like, hey, man, check it out. What we really need, what all the parts we need, uh, and what we're going to do about all the storage fees. Okay, he's and? He's willing to talk business. And? So I opened up. I said, well, here's what we need. I, what? I need, I wanted half of the storage fees. I compensated. You wanted them to pay you two grand? I wanted to pay two grand. Yes, I did. Okay. And so what did you end up doing with the car? Where's the car? So the car got towed because When I, did the car get towed? In April of 2019. Here's the thing, you know, though, when somebody, you know, there are lien laws that you got to follow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm seeing that you filed a lien and then you accepted money after that time and you were going to continue to work with them. Did you file another lien before you just said and went like that they, to their no, car? They, they ghosted on me again. I hear what you're saying about them ghosting on you. I get it. You know, mm. they're ghosting on you because they don't have the money. I, I, so I get that. They don't get to do that. I understand right. that. But the law has a way to protect you from that. And all you have to do is follow what it does. So you don't file a new lien and you just say, Pfft. I mean, that's, there's a consequence to that, my friend. You know that because you know you're supposed to follow the lien law. <sighs> This is quite the pickle. Now, how do you figure that your piece of garbage car that's been such a problem that you've ignored it for a year and something that has no engine that works in it, that, that it's worth $5,450? Because I look up the Kelly Blue Book. Yes, and that was but you the, value the wrong of figure. <laughs> I looked up the my... correct figure, and the <laughs> figure, if it worked, would be $3,000, not $5,000. Oh, right? Then you had brought up a concern right before I walked out here. What was that concern? Um... Let me show you. Oh, no. yeah. She's gonna scroll over. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Two. Crackhead sued me for ten grand. This blank is a joke. Did you tweet that right before coming in here? She's following me on Instagram. <laughs> apparently she is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's apparently following you. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, don't call, don't put it right into someone's a crackhead um, if you don't know if they're a crackhead. Right? Okay, so you should probably take that down. Um, all right, folks, I have some concerns in this case. Obviously, you know what my concern is because you know what the law is um, that you're supposed to follow. You can't, you can't be in a business of repairing cars, take someone's car, and then just say, yeah, I'm going to move places and I'm not going to follow any of the laws that are in place for that. Now, the question then becomes, um, what is the car they left you worth? And I am, even if I don't find that you're entitled to... Um, mm -hmm. Storage fees, because I don't think that there was an agreement to pay storage fees, it is unconscionable that it take that long and that it be on your property for that long. I do, And I do agree with you that that is not right. So that's something playing in my head when I come up with my figure. But my figure is going to be that crappy car you brought to them that doesn't work, plus the value of, I'm not going to make you take back an engine now. So I'm going to value the car in its state at $1,500, half of what a working car would be, because a blue book value is $3,000. Excuse me, Your Honor. No, we're done. So I'm going to value that car at about $1,500. I'm going to add to it the value of the engine. I'm going to value the engine at $800, and I'm going to order him to pay you $2,300. And that is only happening because you didn't follow the laws that are in place for this kind of thing. $2,300 verdict for the plaintiffs. Thank you. So instead of $10,000, the plaintiffs are going to get $2,300. Mr. Masoki, what do you think about that? You know what? She needs the money more than I do. Uh, Master Mold Mechanics, we're the best mechanics in the world. We're honest and we help people. Straight up. The only problem, you shouldn't have let, let the car go. You should have held on to it. Here's the problem. You know? She disappeared again, but yeah, again, you know what? Get another lean like you had, man. Hey, then you'd have been all right. You've I learned. You've learned. You live this. and you learn. Thank all right. You. Nice Thank you very you. much. You must sign a few documents on your way out of the courtroom. 
Here comes Miss Savage now. This saga is over now, yes, right? The car yes. is gone. History. Yes, yes, it is. But unfortunately, he still have a job that he shouldn't have. He's a very bad guy. Well, I mean, you're yeah. not so great. You let a lot of time go by. But the thing stuff. is, I kept trying to reach out to him. He didn't respond. Unfortunately, this is, well, you know, small. It's back and forth. Yes, back and forth. Right. Yeah. I think, think you've all great. learned a lesson in yeah, of this. Of course we did. You? Thank okay. you. Good luck for you. Uh -huh. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. Harvey? Doug, by the way, falsely calling somebody a crackhead on social media is defamation.